Hello and what is up YouTube? My name is G3Iron and today we are taking a look at the Synthesis League, its mechanics, its crafting, and the Nexus. And if you're anything like me over the last several days, you've taken uh, a lot of notes and maybe made a lot of adjustments to your league start and to your guides. And the reality is none of it matters, right? Because every single day we're learning new things. <laughs> and so every note that you may have taken maybe changes on an hourly and daily basis, and that's fine. That's great. I think this is one of the best things about Path of Exile, is that Path of Exile does not, you know, baby us and spoon feed us. Grinding Gear Games doesn't spoon feed us anything. They actually make us go out and figure this stuff out. I think it's intriguing. I think it's one of the more fun aspects of Path of Exile, that we all discover and evaluate all this stuff together and at the same time. I think it's great. I know it's not always as forgiving and sometimes it's head scratching and sometimes you don't even want to interact with it. That being said, those are just my quick two cents. You can always give us a like, a subscribe and hit the bell to be notified for more videos just like this one. So today we're going to take a look at three things. We're going to look at the Nexus, we're going to look at crafting, and we're going to look at uh, some random tips that different people have found out and discovered thus far four days into Synthesis League. So first off, there is this glorious pictorial primer that is floating around and all of the links that we chat about, all of the resources that we use in the video here today are of course linked down below in the video description. There are tons of different people that are just coming out with information on a daily and hourly moment by moment basis. So I'll do my best to try to keep up with different uh, feedbacks and different pieces of uh, information that we get. If you've got comments for us, feel free to let us know if maybe you've discovered something. You can, of course, drop us a comment down below. So really quickly, the Nexus, how do you use it and what's it good for? Well, you get memory pieces, right? You can hold a minimum of 10 at one time and memories that you place in the Nexus, the first time you place it, are planned, right? That's the key word. Picking up memories at 10 pieces will replace unplanned pieces. So your stack on the right-hand side of the, of the Nexus, you're looking at it right now probably in your gameplay window. 10 of those, if you've got 10 of those there, if you go and run a new cav Cavus and pick up more memories, you're going to replace one of the ones on the right-hand side that is unplanned. You can cancel a planned piece by simply right-clicking it. So if you've got a piece in place that maybe you found an upgrade or a better piece too and you want to upgrade it along your path, you can simply cancel that planned piece. It goes back into your log of 10. And then when you rerun a Cavus, you can simply replace that one. You can essentially target farm which uh, particular memories you want to swap out. Pieces you have planned can be moved by placing them again because it's not permanent. A planned piece is not permanent. So you can always remove it, put it back into your memory inventory, and then move it to another spot if you need it. Now, memory bridges must connect to either another bridge or to the void. Memory stabilizers place connected planned pieces. So everything is deletable, movable, exchangeable up until the point that you place it. You must be on an adjacent piece to fully place a piece and then you can delete fully placed pieces with a right click so just be careful if you're interacting with something that you've worked hard you've planned it out and then you've run it adjacent to it so that way it's actually placed be careful not to accidentally right click it because it will simply delete it there can be up to 40 player placed memories on the map so realize that that there is a cap you're capped at 40 so if you're building this massive weaving memory nexus throughout the nexus and you go oh yeah i'm just like two memories away you do have to keep mental track of that or write it down you know take notes take copious notes of your memory nexus because you're capped at 40. now charges are below pieces and show how many times they can be run Memories with only one charge left decay as you run them. Decaying memories can drop fractured items, and decaying memories uh, eventually kick stuff out. So entry and exit stabilizers are always safe spots. They won't necessarily kick you out as long as you're standing on top of them. And then the memories will be left as decayed area stubs behind you. So you want to remove decayed areas behind you to create the longest possible chains. When something is decaying, in other words, when the walls are closing in on you in synthesis, those items will, will get popped back out so you don't have to pick those ones up they'll all kick out back to you at the beginning whereas if something's stable if something is not closing in you actually need to pick stuff up i've made that mistake a couple of times where you're simply running through a memory encounter and it's a stable memory and it's not decaying and you're just like oh yeah i'll just pick that up later no you won't 
<laughs> pick it up now. So there's just two, two differences there. Okay, memory modifiers. So these grant modifiers to every piece connected in a chain from that base modifier. Modifiers travel throughout the entire nexus and along every connected path. Only paths through fully placed pieces will get those modifiers. Planned pieces, if it's in any way grayed out or highlighted, it, it's not going to get the modifier. So just realize that, that you'll need to essentially run a bunch of paths that you'd like to plan out having that modifier before you trigger the modifier. Otherwise, if there's still a planned piece, it'll dead end there. It essentially acts like a full stop. You can stack huge numbers of modifiers on chains with planning. And of course, this is where all of those various images that we're all seeing floating around the forums, around Reddit, around YouTube, and around streams are coming from, where you're having people have these massive encounters where like the right-hand side of their screen is just a massive text of different modifiers. That's because they've stacked up a really, really juicy memory modifier. These reward nodes give a specific type of loot based on the icon above it. Reward nodes always have one charge and always decay. Remember, decaying memories mean that it will spit everything out at the end of it. Reward chests are at a random spot that acts as a safe zone. So remember how we said that there are safe zones on the uh, synthesized entry on the memory spots? Well, there is also a safe zone with the chests. So reward chests are at that random spot, which means that you've got to find it quickly. The trick to finding something quickly in a decaying zone is once you have procced the zone, notice where the walls are collapsing in from and go the opposite direction. So if they're closing in immediately around your character, your character is going to want to flee those areas. If it's closing in more on the right-hand side than on the left-hand side, then you're actually going to want to go left. So you go the opposite direction of the closing walls. The final area that connects to the node dictates the node level. And IE, the example of this, is that level 70 pieces leading to a reward node makes the reward node a level 70. Completed nodes leave decayed areas that expire within the instance. <clears throat> so the important part here about the decay and about the level of the zone is that this essentially scales with you. So if you want to interact with the synthesis mechanic as you are leveling a new character or your first character or your 100th character, that's great. You can essentially change the encounters that you are bumping into based on your desired level of encounter and the rewards aren't set to a particular level which is really really handy because if you're level 10 and you want to get a reward bump from your memory nexus you don't have to worry that it's accidentally going to be a level 70 zone because <clears throat> you've already placed level 70 zones down somewhere else you can plan those out you can change those out at any point in time so planned versus place pieces some really quick highlights planned pieces are darkened on the map planned pieces are still in your inventory Right-clicking a planned piece returns it to the inventory. Reward nodes can spawn, making placing a planned piece impossible. So just be aware of that, that the map and the, the Nexus memory map itself can spawn and mess with stuff that's planned out. So if you've got something planned out and you want to keep progressing along something, just be aware of that. You might actually want to lay down that track of the railroad before it can get interfered with. Placed pieces are normal brightness on the map. Placed pieces actually exist on the map and aren't in your inventory, which frees up slots for you to collect more memories. And right-clicking a placed piece will permanently delete it. It does not go back to your inventory. It is simply gone. So judging from this, there's two quick takeaways from this. First off, uh, just a quick summary takeaway from these particular mechanics. Remember that you only can have 40 placed, 40 total memories placed. And also remember that connections, that the more connections there are on a particular Cavus memory, the better, right? So if you can run an instance or an encounter with Cavus that has got four synth synthesized pathways, right, with one of them already starting off because that's your starting location. So essentially you've got to run and track down three. That is way better than a zone that's got two or three, simply because it gives you more options as you are building your memory nexus. You're not locked into a specific angle or locked into a specific path. You have all of the paths open. This is essentially a board game. I get that. Some of you are going to like that. Some of you aren't. If you are choosing to play with this and interact with it, I'm assuming that you like it. And so if you do like it, I hope that you can use it to the best of your ability and be as efficient as you'd like to be. And of course, it's always more efficient to have more options to have those four wheels available as opposed to two or three. 
We don't have any more information at the moment that anybody's found out if Cavus locks out a certain number of uh, memories or tile sets such that at a certain point he'll only generate, you know, memories with two or only generate memories with three or only generate memories with four. So if anybody out there has tested that, feel free to leave us a comment and let us know. Okay, so that's a little bit about the Nexus. This right here is a wonderful post by P. Dons. It's the synthesizer mechanics turned into an image. It's absolutely wonderful. It is, of course, linked down below in the video description. This is a little bit of what the image looks like. It talks about uh, his process of going through three different items. And it's confused a lot of us. It's confused a lot of us in Guild. It's confused a lot of us on Discord. It's confused a lot of us on the G3 uh, YouTube community. So here's some of what we've discovered so far. So first off, uh, synthesized items are items that are spit out of the synthesizer. Fractured items are the items that you put in that have got the locked prefixes or suffixes. So one way to think about it is a synthesized item has got a, an implicit as it comes out of the crafting process. A fractured item is an item that's got prefixes and suffix that you put into the synthesizer. So two different things. Input, output is the way to think about that. So when you put in fractured uh, items into the synthesizer, a randomly chosen base from among the three that you put in is what will come out. The sum of all three uh, quality will be divided by three. So it's the average, right? It's the average quality of what you've got on your items. And then the item level this has been tested and tried. I've seen numerous different people mention this. If you've got an exception to this rule, please leave us a, a comment down below so that way we can know. But so far, it seems like the highest item level among the three different fractured items are the way to actually dictate the item level of the synthesized item that comes out of the synthesizer. And then all of the implicits um, are essentially chosen for a potential synthesized implicit. I'm sorry, all of the prefixes and suffix are potentially chosen. So one of the ways that people are gaming this is you're simply removing all of the various uh, prefixes and suffixes that you can, except for the ones that you want on the rare item to be chosen and to be pulled from. So we're going to talk more about this here in just a second. This is the website PoEDB. You can, of course, check out the link down below in the video description. This is all of the various links and possible implicits that can come out of synthesized items. This is all data mined. It's wonderful, wonderful information. I'm going to try to get it here so that way we can see the entirety. Yep, we can see the entirety of uh, the items and the roles. You can see on the right hand side that there is a value on the middle that there is a particular type of explicit mod stat and then there is a synthesized implicit on the left hand side so in other words if you're looking for a particular outcome as you are synthesizing you're going to want to look all the way on the left hand side for the synthesized implicit and it's interacting with the explicit mod stat uh, that was the input of a fractured item going into the synthesizer so in order to have the synthesized implicit come out you need to have the fractured explicit mod stat being a prefix or a suffix go in okay it's also got item classes which means if you've got a specific item set that you are looking for that you've already collected and you'd like to see what it, whether or not it's useful you can simply sort along those lines a couple of things here every single build in the world can use these mods all right if you're already looking at this and thinking oh my goodness iron this is pages and pages and by the way this is pages and pages of implicits that can possibly come out this is basically every single stat in the game that can be dictated and come out so you might be thinking, Iron, this is just way too much information. I don't want to interact with it. So be it. That's fine. That's great. Nobody's forcing you to interact with it. If, however, you would like to get into crafting and you would like to craft your own items, there has never been a better, more powerful time to do so because you can target craft all of your items that you so choose. Think about it this way. Think about what Incursion has done for us with double corrupting. How you essentially can say, oh, I've got a really, really powerful endgame item that I would like to make even more powerful. I'll put it into a tier 3 corruption chamber and hope for the best, right? Where you get two corrupted implicits instead of just one, potentially. What Synthesis is doing is now saying, hey, rather than making you risk your entire item and bricking it, maybe what you can do is you can start that process rather than finishing the process with Evolve and the double corrupting, you can start that process with synthesizing and saying, what would you like this item to be? What would your dream item like to be? And you can narrow down the outcomes as you narrow down the modifiers on the fractured items that you input into the synthesizer that the synthesizer, synthesizer then has limited outcomes uh, coming back out of the crafting process. Okay, so a couple of people have done some testing. First off, Graminius 
has said. So I grabbed three shields off trades. <clears throat> I score, scoured them down to one fractured mod, magic items, regaled them. The reason why I did this is because it's got to be a rare item in order to synthesize. Annulled down to one mod rares, all with the same minus attribute requirements being the only stat, which is a uh, synthesis mod. List as being the input for either rolling all attributes or one to two minimum frenzy power endurance charges. The result was a roll of all attributes. The three attributes rolls had probabilities of 60, 70, and 85 with a minimum char charge probability at 100. So I had 100 divided by 315 or 32% chance of rolling the implicit I wanted and was unsuccessful. I also tried it with two mod rares, scour and regal, and the result was an armor implicit shield which was already on one of the shields as a spare mod, also confirming that it is any mod on the original items that triggers the implicit, not just the fractured mod. So this is one of the reasons why annulment orbs are going to be incredibly, incredibly valuable. This, e this league and use widely, uh, just be widely used across the board because anybody and everybody that's going to be using the synthesis process to try and target craft something is going to want to get rid of as many mods as possible and keep the mods that they would like to keep as a potential uh, crafting input as a fractured item into the synthesizer to then output the implicit that they would desire. So there is some feedback already on this. A couple of people have said, look, three regals and three annuls, let alone the price of three fractured items and the correct affix, and being RNG related seems like way too much. Is it even worth it? Seems like most people won't be able to afford that uh, for so much currency for an implicit. I would just like to counter. I totally echo what Tall and Godless has to say here. Some of the implicits, though, are god tier. For instance, I'm playing an Ignite Fireballer, and there are weapon implicits that make your Ignites burn faster. This stat does not exist anywhere other than a synthesized implicit and from the Malevolence Watcher's Eye. There is Diddy and Dawn, but that doesn't work for spells. This ends up being like a 35% more multiplier to my build. I just include this discussion in this post, and again, this is all linked down below. So that way we can all look and say, look, just take a step back. This is incredibly powerful stuff. It's taking a while for everybody to figure out. But once people figure this stuff out, this it's not going to be game-breaking in, in as though the game is going to be trivialized, but it's going to be game-breaking in comparison to what we all had available to us previously prior to being able to use synthesis, synthesis. To be able to say, if you could stick any stat on a particular piece of gear that you would want, what stat would you like it to be? Synthesis allows us to do that. It's incredibly powerful. Okay, so science. Yay, science. This is another great post. This is from Train of Fish, and he's got the details for the process down below. Credit. Uh, he gives credit to Ziggity Stream for figuring this out. So you look at the database mods like we've already discussed. There is a weight value against each mod that is not really a weight. So in the previous Reddit thread that was put together where Griminius put together all of these different things and said, hey, look, I've got a percent chance to, to come out. Actually, we figured out it's not a percent chance. There's simply what's called at least what Train of Fish is calling buckets. So the weight value against each mod is not really weight. It's the sum of numeric values on the mod that determines the bracket. So, for example, for the gem level mod, for those of you that are looking to increase gem levels on your items, there are three different brackets. There is the first bracket, which needs to be plus three. That's a bucket that contains a value of three. A second bracket, which is four to six quality of socketed bow, which is plus five. And then if you want to actually hit the plus one to level of socketed bow gem, you need to have a value of plus 10. You're wondering, well, where's that value come from? Well, here's how to read it. If the sum of the mods on your item is less than or equal to 3, then you get the first bucket. If the sum is less than or equal to 5, you get the second bucket. Otherwise, you get the third bucket, which is what we actually want, the plus 1 level of socketed bows, which is a ridiculously powerful implicit when you consider all of the different prefixes and suffixes that you can already put on bows. So, of course, the implicit is random, so you want to narrow down the pool of mods as much as possible. Two fractured rares are great since you just scour them and hope for the best, and you get two implicit mods. Two fractured rares with the same mod, i.e. attack speed, are ideal since you, both, you, since you get both implicits. I wanted to test this quickly, so I couldn't find the plus two gem and attack speed for sale at the same time. So I took two fractured rares and two one fractured rares, scoured, regaled, and master crafted attack speed on the latter and hoped for the best. The rules for item base and eye level have already been described and we've already been over that. Okay, so this, what this means, and I'm, for those of you that are going, okay, that's too many numbers. 
All right. Think of it this way. For Tier 3, you need three or fewer. For Tier 2, you need five or fewer. For Tier 1, you need greater than five. This is just for this particular example for these particular mods. If you'd like to know what those particular mods are and the weight value of them, again, this is how you're using POB database. It's on the right-hand side to show the particular weight value that's needed. So if you want to hit life regenerated per second on some flasks, or sorry, on a belt, then you need increased flask recovery rate, and you need to synthesize those items. You need to take three fractured items, and their value needs to be 150 or above in order to hit this increased life recovery. Otherwise, if it's below 150 but above 75, you're going to get just life regenerated. If it's below 75, and at 70, you're going to get life regenerated per second. So you see how these values interact. What you put in and the value of the stat that you are looking for impacts directly what comes back out. All right. If you're confused on any of this, it's okay. It's only a couple days in the league. You can look at all of these links down below and slowly go through them if I'm going through any of these too fast. All of this information is available to all of us here on the internet collectively together as the Path of Exile community. And this, again, I think is the best part of Path of Exile is that we all get to figure this stuff out together. I did want to scroll down here to one other comment. Where is it? All right, here it is. <laughs> Thanks for sharing. I'm starting to get this feeling when it comes to the POE mechanics. I'm getting too old for this. <laughs> okay. Feel free to post your memes down below. There are plenty of memes out there going around. I've come up with a few. I use the aliens guy because it definitely feels that way, right? As we are working out the synthesis mechanics, there's a lot going on here. But ladies and gentlemen of the Path of Exile G3 community, I, I put it before you as a case. If you had the ability to choose any single stat to go on an implicit for a particular item, wouldn't you want to be able to do that? Wouldn't that be incredibly powerful? And if you have zero interest whatsoever in crafting, that's totally fine. Perfectly fine. This means that other people who are happy to do this crafting and happy to figure this stuff out are going to be making this stuff and selling it available for trade, meaning your build just got better either through your own crafting or because other people are going to craft it and sell it to you. This is going to be an awesome league, and everybody that's willing to take the time to figure this stuff out, as always, as is tradition with POE leagues, those who figure it out early and often will make a ton of currency from it. The last thing that we will wrap up with, of course, are discussion topics. I would submit this to you guys. This is POE Lab. This is the last resource that we'll talk about today, which they've got a dedicated section to talk about the synthesis league and mechanics. They do a pretty good job of updating. POE Lab does a great job of everything. They update the lab charts every single day. So those of you that lab and use their lab charts, in order to run the labyrinth, uh, you know how dedicated and what a great job they do. They've got a Patreon. They've got all sorts of ways to go out and support them. Uh, so I don't usually necessarily go out of my way to throw people out and, and to say, hey, go and support these people. These people do great work. Any day of the week you would like to go run a labyrinth, they do a great job with it. On top of all of the info that they provide for labyrinth, they've also now got a page up for synthesis that they're going to be adding to. You can already see they're going to be adding info for memory stabilizers, fractured items, as well as others. So keep an eye over there for more information as well. I just have a bunch of their web pages uh, bookmarked for Delve, for Incursion, uh, for Best Yuri. They've been very, very helpful throughout my years while I've been playing Path of Exile. If you've got any suggestions for either resources or maybe you yourself have done some testing and tried things out, leave us a comment down below. Our discussion topics for the day are that. What have you been able to craft and what have you been able to figure out so far as you are interacting in Synthesis League? Have you had any awesome items that have pumped out? I am super duper hype and I cannot wait to wrap up this video so that way I can get back into game and start finding and crafting more fractured items and turning out awesome synthesized results. So thank you so much for watching and I hope that today is the day you find a mirror of Calandra and you can just go out and craft whatever it is that your heart desires in Synthesis League.